like nothing's been easy, but I'm persistent. Mm. And it's like, I think that would help a lot of people to know. It's like, okay, if, if I just, if I keep going, if I don't quit, if I don't give up, I will, you know, eventually get, you might not get what you want exactly, but you will, you will get, you know, where you're supposed to be. Hey, I'm Lauren Lucas. I'm obsessed with learning and I live for true authentic connection. I'm a wife, a working mom, professional singer songwriter, and an instructor of songwriting at my alma mater, Belmont University. You could say that life's a little full. I'm always looking for a way to sneak in some me time with great friends, good food, and meaningful conversation. Here we talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the hard, and the wonderful. My guests include well-known recording artists, hit songwriters, film directors, wellness coaches, and creative entrepreneurs. Plus, we throw in a delicious beverage, an easy weekend recipe. Think of it like happy hour, but better. I'm Lauren Lucas. This is The Happiest Hour. It's the happiest hour when I'm with you. It's the happiest hour. Let's raise our glasses to doing this crazy life. Keeping it real can't get much better As long as I'm with you, it's the happiest hour Oh, a quick P.S. My plan is to bring you a full season of the happiest hour. But let's be honest, as a busy working toddler mom, work-life balance, at least for me, can be a challenge sometimes. So I might skip a week here and there. Here's what that means. No matter how you enjoy the happiest hour, whether it's through the YouTube live video or through your favorite podcast app, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for the latest episode. That way, you won't miss a thing. Today, my guest is Whitney Duncan. You know Whitney from her music, singles like Skinny Dippin'. Uh, you also might know her from television shows like National Star, Survivor. She and her husband were even on The Amazing Race. Uh, she is about to have a baby come earthside, so we have a lot to talk about. Music, creativity, pivoting into different parts of our careers, and of course, motherhood. So let's dive in. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to the happiest hour. Thank you. Glad thanks, to be here. Well, thanks for being my guest. Yeah. So, okay, you are from a tiny little town in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, you have a cousin who is also a fabulous singer-songwriter. Yeah. Jonathan Singleton. Yeah. Do you have other family that's musical? Did you come from a musical family? You know, not really. My parents were definitely not musical. Um, my granddad was a really good singer. He never pursued it or, you know, you could just hear him singing around the house and he loved music. And he, he was actually the one that got me into like Elvis and Jerry okay. Lewis. Uh -huh. And like, we would watch all those performances and, he just really loved music, yeah. um, a lot of the old country stuff, traditional stuff. And um, so I think he definitely fueled my fire mm -hmm. uh, being, you know, three, four years old and being obsessed with Elvis. Like I knew I told them really early on, it's like, that's what I want to be. And they're probably okay. like, oh, gosh. Yeah, I was going to ask. Oh, like, no. How, <laughs> how did you know you wanted to pursue music and what prompted yeah. I mean, it was just a love for Elvis, truly. And yeah. then I started um performing at church and um you know any festivals school talent shows all of those things um really just i mean i loved it mm -hmm. i would like force my parents to take me to these little you know festivals and the strawberry festival and oh, yeah. all that stuff you, you know, know you've did all those oh we've did done them do, all did you do the pageants too? oh yeah the pageants <laughs> yes yeah. i mean i'm pretty sure I slept through most of those early pageants at the fair okay. that my mom put me in. I mean, I really did actually. Wow. Um, I was a newborn. I oh. have a picture from the first fair. Wow. Yeah. Oh was, my gosh. And no, then when was... I got old enough to be like, okay, I'm done with these. Yeah. Then my mom was always great about like, introduce you to a lot of things. And then what do you love? Mm -hmm. And so I love to say she really did from dance to pageants, basketball, softball, um, singing, piano, guitar. I, I've tried it all. Yeah. So yeah. I had a very, it sounds like I had a very similar yeah. upbringing, just small mm -hmm. South Carolina, Southern, yeah. all the festivals, all the pageants, <laughs> yeah. all the talent shows. So yeah. Okay. Yep. 
what what now keeps you creatively inspired um honestly listening to music keeps mm -hmm. me creatively inspired really um like the elvis movie that just came out i hate to keep going back to elvis but um it really did inspire me again mm. that like to see i mean it was very sad obviously but um I don't know just people's career like that mm -hmm. um and living just living yeah. if i get you know stressed and i have way too much on my plate that does not creatively inspire me that's a that's a really great point yeah so i have to like really be mindful of making sure i'm not just writing songs every day to write songs mm -hmm. like what are my goals but like also like do i have time to go out for a hike do mm -hmm. i have time to like think Mm -hmm. think on the ideas and read a book yeah. and take a bath and like those kind of things help fuel creativity for me yeah it's funny so I'm teaching a songwriting class at Melmont mm -hmm. and some of my students came in after a writing exercise that I encouraged them to do mm -hmm. for homework and they were like I almost wish it was harder because I just I don't feel like I'm doing enough you know yeah and I feel like when you talk about taking a hike or taking a bath or reading a book I also sometimes feel guilty, like mm -hmm. this can't possibly be part of my work. Right. But when you're a writer, yeah. it it really is. You need yeah. input in order to have output. Absolutely. Yeah. So I love I love that you watching movies. Oh yeah, yeah. Big for sure. for sure. Big. I mean, it's watching other people's experiences that maybe you're not going through, but being able to maybe get an idea from mm -hmm. those and being able to put yourself in those people's shoes that mm -hmm. you know really help you connect with an audience. Yep. Yeah, yeah, love that. So you, um, you have had, we both have had the similar experience mm -hmm. of, of being signed to Warner Brothers yeah. or whatever it's called now, Warner Entertainment or whatever. I don't even know. Um, <laughs> so, and you were just after me on the mm -hmm. roster. So you've had the experience of being a major label artist. Mm -hmm. You've also been an independent artist. What would you say are the pros and cons of, of, of both, really? Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, obviously, you know, being on a label definitely has its perks. Um, you do have a massive team mm -hmm. that are, um, you know, most of the time really great at what they do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got great marketing brains. Um, you've just got a lot of help, yeah. you know. And and also, they have a lot of money. I mean, to be honest, right. mm -hmm. uh, from tour support um, to uh, radio tour. Obviously, as an independent artist, I would never be able to afford a radio tour. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's the never-ending mm -hmm. radio tour. Oh, yeah. Um, flying to a different place every day. like And the never-ending bucket of money. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, that is, that are the, those are the perks. Um, with that, you know, you sometimes can kind of lose who you are creatively and kind of get pulled in different directions and you've got a lot of opinions and mm -hmm. all of those things. Uh, whereas an independent artist, it really is on you to create. Um, it's up to you to, to make the product. And then you have the freedom of how mm -hmm. you want to get that to the world. Yeah. Um, so it's there's pros and cons for sure. Um, and, you know, depending on where the artist is in their career, sometimes a record deal doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I think because where I'm at right now, I don't know that that's, unless I'm going to like actual radio, I don't know that that's something I, that makes sense for me. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. better to have the freedom to be able to release music whenever you choose mm -hmm. um, is a really nice thing. Yeah. Well, and you've also have your own in infrastructure built around you yeah. with different either team members mm -hmm. or, or you yourself are wearing the hats that yeah. kind of support the infrastructure you need on an independent yeah. level. Absolutely. I still have management. I still have a publisher. Um, and all of these, I think, are, as an independent artist, are really, really helpful. I've also been the kind of independent artist that I really didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. And I was all of those things. Mm -hmm. I don't want to ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. I mean, I've been manager. I've been tour manager. I've mm -hmm. done all the things. And I don't want to do that again. Yeah. It's too much. Yeah. It's too much for one person to handle. And still try to be creative that's mm -hmm. where I, that's where when i i was in a, a band for a little while and i was doing all the things i felt like my creativity suffered yeah because i was having to be so business-minded and focusing on that side of things that 
you know, it just kind of drug me down. Yeah. 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 I, well, I've been there as well, so I totally yeah. understand that. Yeah. What, what advice, if any, would you give someone who is wanting to just even get in is on the ground floor of wanting to be on the creative side of the music mm -hmm. business? Any advice? Oh, that's hard. Um, you know, I don't really, I don't really know as far as advice goes. I mean, I think, you know, making connections is going to be probably the most helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, piecing some kind of a team together, mm -hmm. whether that's a mentor, because along the way, even when I was an independent, independent artist, I still have friends in the business mm -hmm. that can help guide me. I think finding that person that's going to help give you good advice and good information yeah. um, and not steer you in the wrong direction, which mm -hmm. easier said than done, right? Um, yeah, but you're right. You cannot be an island. No. In life in general. I mean, no, yeah. in, in no industry can you yeah. really be an island. We need other people, but for sure in the music business. Absolutely. You don't do it alone. No, you don't. You've got to have somebody that you trust that you can run things by. And so that consistently for me, I feel like has been the biggest, um, biggest helpful. Yeah. Yes. That's great. I guess. Yeah. yeah and great. be unique. I honestly, I've always said this from day one, like I'll, you know, when people say, oh, you should sound more like this or sound more like that. It's like, but why? We already have those artists. Right. Right. Like yeah. I, I love so-and-so, but why would I want to sound like them? Right. They're super successful. Yes but they're already in the industry. That's right. Like, yeah. I think just embracing your uniqueness mm -hmm. is the best thing you can do as an artist. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. Um, so you are, in addition to music, mm -hmm. you are passionate about other things as well. Fitness mm -hmm. comes to mind. Yeah. You and I both, we were just talking yeah. off camera, you and I both did uh, Bill Crutchfield's uh -huh. camp when he uh -huh. was just, I guess he was just kind of starting out. Yeah, maybe. Bill was, um, wasn't he, was he, he was training some, some people though, wasn't he? Well, Randy Hauser was in Ran, our Yeah, group. Randy Hauser was in there. Um, yeah. I don't know who all he was training at the time, but then he like exploded. And yes. Like Miranda. And that's what Paul. it, that's who I was thinking about. Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah, that was after, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. We, so basically I think what we're saying is we started Bill Crutchfield. Pretty much. Thanks. You're welcome, happened, Bill. So. <laughs> um, he but, was great. <laughs> so, um, so I mean, there are a lot of us who are, and you're about to become a mom, or mm -hmm. you already are a mom. You you have been carrying this little one now it's, for nearly yeah. a month, so you're already a mama. In my I guess life. I qualify. I haven't really you done anything much life. yet. Um, <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot yeah. you're passionate about. Music, mm -hmm. fitness, family, probably some other things too. Yeah. So as a multi-passionate person, mm -hmm. um, and you're actually a fitness instructor as mm -hmm. well, how do you, how do you balance all the things you do that you're passionate about and give, you know, so that you're able to give priority and, and build this full life that mm -hmm. you love. Um, and also how do you choose what's right to fit in your life? That's hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know that I have an answer to all of that, <laughs> but uh, I'm still figuring it out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really, I've always loved fitness. Mm -hmm. I mean, I truly, I am one of those weirdos that actually love working out. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I don't know. I played sports. I like thrive in that kind of boot camp environment. Mm -hmm. And um, so I really fell in love with, you know, from Bill to Barry's boot camp. And then, like I said, I took an Orange Theory class and haven't turned back. Like mm -hmm. that just, it just was everything I loved. Mm -hmm. It had the data, it had the heart rate. It just, I just loved um, the whole environment and yeah. the community and the brand and, all of those things. So I definitely, that I kind of really just fell into. Mm -hmm. That was never a part of the plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was getting my um, personal trainer license, my husband was like, why? Like, what are you, <laughs> what are you planning to do? That? I'm like, I'm not planning to do anything with it. Mm -hmm. I'm just interested. Love it. it's a, I love it. It's a passion. Um, I just kind of want this knowledge for myself. Mm -hmm. And then sure enough, when that came along and then, you know, that was, one thing during COVID that really got me through because, you know, nobody was touring. Right. Um, right. We were doing Zoom rights. So I had all of this time and, you know, not time, but like, you know, I, I just wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. So it really, um, 
I don't know, it just really gave me something. It, it just kind of fueled that passion a little bit mm-hmm. more. Yeah. So, so I just love, you know, yeah, I love the health and fitness industry as a whole and, um, and just see how it impacts people. Yeah. Very similar to music in a way, you know, you really are changing people's days. Mm. You know, you hear a song, your whole day can turn around. Mm -hmm. Same thing. You get a workout in, it changes your whole mindset for the day. Yeah. Makes you feel better. So it's like, I love, um, I guess affecting people in that way. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I just, I mean, yeah, that's fitness and music. And, you know, I try not to, I mean, I love other things too, but like I have to keep, I do have to keep, be mindful of what I allow onto my schedule. Sure. Yeah. And just making, making it okay to say no to things Mm -hmm. has been a hard lesson to learn, Mm -hmm. especially now pregnant, tired. Um, (laughs) yeah. And it's like, and I would come home and I'm tired. I was like, Oh, what you do? I was like, well, I've helped grow a human today. Right. So I'm tired. (laughs) Isn't that enough? I'm tired. Yeah. I've done a lot today. Right. You know, I've coached three classes. I wrote a song and I'm Wow. Through a human during all of that. Is so, that is that a typical day for you? Coaching several um, and then writing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll coach early in the morning and uh, typically just work around my writing schedule. And Are you writing um, five days a week? Typically? I am not. Okay. I will not allow myself to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and luckily, I do have, you know, publishers that are supportive of that. Sure. And yeah. understand that if you don't have time to live your life, you get creatively stale. Yeah, there's nothing to write about. There's nothing to write about. You're just stressed. And you're just going into rights and not being able to give it all you've got. So I really prefer to keep it to around three days a week. Um, That sounds like a good balance to me. It's a pretty good balance. And I know, obviously, when baby comes, things will have to probably, I'll have to be even more mindful about balancing. But right now, I've kind of found a good good system. Depending on if you nurse or not, Mm -hmm. I found... My child slept when they're so little, Mm -hmm. they sleep so much Mm -hmm. that I actually got a ton done. (laughs) Right. So, you know, depending on how you do it, um, you might find that you have some time and then it's all, and then give it a few weeks and then it's all going to change again. (laughs) Yeah, I know. And I'm a big, I have to have eight hours of sleep. Oh yeah. So I do most mornings get up around 4 a.m. Okay. But I'm in bed around, try to be in bed around eight Wow. For sure, sleep by nine. Okay, so I got so, up at five thirty, and I thought I was a pretty early riser, particularly for creative. Yeah. So what are you doing at four, and and when's your first appointment or five? Thing? Yeah, I oh, have to be. Yeah, to I train. coach. Mm-hmm. So you do the early class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that's how you fit in, and you do like but five, that's how six, I fit in. seven. Yeah. And then you, so I do early mornings, right. and then I work out, and then I go to my right, and then well, once yeah. your once once your baby's earth side. Yeah. You'll be getting up at like three to do a feeding. Right. And so you can just start that day earlier, get a yeah. few more things done. I mean, that's the thing. The key is really for me is going to bed early enough yeah. that I still get my sleep. That's right. Because I do not do well. Yeah. I'm not one of those people that can get by on five hours. Um, I like wish that. I was. That would be great. You might you might start learning how to do that at least for the first three months. And then off camera, I know I told you my mm-hmm. my secret weapon for getting babies to sleep. Yeah. Well, I'm excited uh, and to learn and that. it's worked for us, <laughs> but it's a very personal decision. <laughs> well, and that's what my husband is a big sleeper too. Yeah, so yeah. we are, we like our eight hours. We also love our midday naps. There, oh, there you so go. Oh, nice. we'll see how that All goes. Right. Very good. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So let's transition yeah. since we're kind of on motherhood a little bit already. Mm-hmm. Um, is you've had a very full music career. You've been on National Star, Survivor. You and your husband did amazing race mm-hmm. together. So, I mean, You've done a lot in life mm-hmm. already. Is starting a family, is the timing intentional? Was it um, just the way it worked out for y'all? I mean, yeah. explain a little bit about, about Well, you that. know, it's, well, it's not, it wasn't intentional because we intended it to happen a lot sooner. Okay. It just didn't work out that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I found out, I found out when I was 34 that I took a hormone test, um, modern fertility test, actually. One of my friends posted about it on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm interested. Like, you know, you always say, well, we know we want kids. We've right. got them named. But we're also not ready for them. Right, right. And, you know, from we met on Survivor, but we traveled the world, amazing race. We got married. We continued to travel the world together. Mm-hmm. And, like, we love it, adventures, mm-hmm. you know. And we're very, 
um, you know, we love to travel. And so we didn't really see slowing down for a while. Um, I probably would have even started trying later in life, mm. but I found out with that fertility test that I had a um, low AMH. By low, I mean almost non-existent. Like wow. they sent me another test because wow. they're like that can't be accurate. Mm. So at that point, you know, finding that out is like, oh gosh. Well, then we can't wait. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not an option. You mm -hmm. know, it's either it's now or never. Mm -hmm. I don't know when I won't have eggs anymore. Basically is kind of what that meant. Right. So, um, started seeing, uh, a fertility specialist found out I had a fibroid that they said okay. would have blocked any kind of implantation or, because we also had just been playing the, you know, whatever happens, happens oh, game for okay. a long time, <laughs> a long time uh -huh. and nothing was happening. Yeah. And so I, you know, I didn't want to get crazy with the trying thing and, you know, mm -hmm. Make I, it unsexy. Right. I didn't <laughs> want to do that right. to it and, um, ended up doing that to it. Yeah. You know? I mean, it, my brother told me, he's like, well, never mind. I won't even tell you what he told me. <laughs> but anyway, um, if it doesn't feel like a job, you're not doing it right. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Well, nah. When it comes down to okay. it, we've, we've both <laughs> yeah. been through some similar yeah. fertility journeys and right uh, and you get so the frustration you do i mean it, yeah yeah it can it can it's like awkward sometimes <laughs> yeah yeah and though so when i found out about fibroid it had to be surgically removed okay. and that made a lot of sense why for so many years mm. nothing had happened mm -hmm. and so surgically removed in january 2020 right before the world shut down mm -hmm. and um Perfect, but perfect timing. What else did you have? I to literally do? thought that. I thought that. I was like, oh, this is great. We'll just yeah. get pregnant during this time, and this would be a perfect time to, you know, pop out a baby and then head right back to it all. There you go. Well, it didn't happen that way. <laughs> and so finally got we got to a place where um, I saw another specialist, and they're like, yeah, you've got diminished ovarian reserve. Time is of the essence, basically, mm -hmm. and we just made the decision to go as aggressive as possible. Mm -hmm. And so IVF it was. Mm -hmm. Skipped the IUIs, and mm -hmm. um, I had, um, yeah, I mean, we just, I'm glad looking back that we're like, let's just do this. Yeah. It's not the way we saw it going down, but we're also not willing to, um, I don't want to be, you know, looking back wishing we had done something sooner. That's right. That's right. So we did. We jumped right in. Uh, first egg retrieval, got one egg. Okay. We called it the $12,000 egg. <laughs> um, that was yeah. accurate. It actually was probably a little more than that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and from there, we started rolling. I mean, as a poor responder to the meds, mm. um, IVF was definitely not probably the right, the, the, a great way to go for, for me. Mm. Um, because my body just didn't want to produce. Like if you go, most normal women can get, you know, 20 to 30 eggs mm -hmm. in a single egg retrieval to my one. Mm -hmm. It's like when you start breaking those numbers down, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Right. But I didn't care. I was just like, no, I don't care. Um, we will keep doing this until it works. And my doctor, luckily enough, listened to me. And um, I told him, I was like, as long as you're willing to go in here, and get these eggs out, I am willing to keep trying. Yeah. I don't care if I spend every dime I've ever made on it. Do you mind me asking how many cycles you went through? Five. Whitney, five. Yeah. I so, imagine you may be saying three. No. I did not expect five. And the the reason I say five, and it wasn't, when I say five, it was five egg retrievals. Okay. So we okay. did two egg retrievals. I got four total eggs from those four eggs, two embryos, mm -hmm. and then, um, we did not test those. We mm -hmm. just transferred them, fresh transfer. And I remember it was the 4th of July and I was playing a show the next day in Kansas. And they're like, well, we can't do a day five transfer because you might not be back. Like mm -hmm. flight rate, like uh -huh. a flight could get canceled. And so they're like, let's just do tomorrow. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh my, it's happening. Yeah. You know, and then go play a show. And that ended in a chemical, but, um, mm. 
and I didn't even know what a chemical was. Yeah. I took a home... a lot of a lot of options of things that can happen. <sighs> yes. I mean, and I, you know, I took a home test because there's no way in the world I could have waited mm-hmm. to, to mm-hmm. take that blood test and and was so excited about a positive. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, a few days later it's like I'm like, wait a second. What's happening? Yeah. Like this I, and then of course you Google, it's like, oh, well, dang it. Now yeah. I've got Husband excited, family excited, yeah. like, yeah. yeah. And so then that, after talking to my doctor, I was like, he's like, do you need, you, I feel like, you know, maybe you need a break. I'm like, no, I'm not, I don't need a break. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Let's roll. Let's mm-hmm. do this. Number three, let's wow. back to back. Let's go. He's like, okay. It's like, and I think we should do three more retrievals this time. And he's like, okay. Wow. <laughs> and and so I just knew to get a certain amount of egg, you have to get a certain amount of eggs mm-hmm. to create a certain amount of embryos. It is not, everybody's like, oh, you just need one. I'm like, yeah, that's good in theory and all. Right. And I understand why people say that. And that is a very positive way to think about it. But that's not really the case. Yeah. And matter of fact, even just getting one embryo does not ensure that that will work. That's right. Right. I mean, I have several friends that are going through it right now, and they're like, "Oh, I got an embryo," and I'm like, "It is so exciting, but that's not the, just because that's not the finish line. It's not, yeah. and it's not, and it's just a heartbreaking process." But we got through three more retrievals. On that last retrieval, I get got eight eggs in one cycle, and it was just yeah. remember feeling like, "Wow, my body's decided to work." Yes, and, you know, it's like, "Okay, I see what you're wanting of me." Well, I remember you posted something on Instagram about yeah. a retrieval and I DM'd you because yes. I've been through that. And yeah. and I was just like, hey, girl, just you don't even need to respond. Like, it's a mm-hmm. personal thing. But if mm-hmm. you ever want to chat, I'm here. Yeah. And you wrote back, you're like, oh, yeah, this is like our third go around or something. Yeah. Like, this is old hat. I was like, oh, you got it. Cool. And I mean, I just and I feel like it's it was such a taboo topic, mm. you know, to even talk about that stuff. So like, why? I mean, yeah. Oh, it, it's the happening fact that way more happening way more. I had friends going through it. Mm-hmm. I would see on Instagram, people would reach out. Oh, I've been through that. And I had no idea. That's right. It's like, so it's like, let's just make it a common mm-hmm. topic. Like, let's talk about it. It's nothing we've done. It's just the way you just, you know, you think this, when you get ready to have a kid, you're just gonna be able to have a kid. Well, yeah. And you it shouldn't and work that way. As as women, we go through most of our mm-hmm. lives trying not to get pregnant. Yeah. And doing all these things yeah. to not do that. Right. And then when you come down to it, and it's, it's and actually want not to, that easy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it is. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. And so all that to be said from those 15 eggs, seven made it to blastocyst stage. Oh, nice. And I, wow. I just remember I was literally in a riot the day and they get, call and give you these updates. It's like how many made it to today, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just, um, oh so crazy wow and um so did you choose what you wanted implanted no 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 i didn't want that i didn't want to make that choice yeah yeah. i just um because if it didn't work then i would question like what if we chose the other one you know Mm -hmm. like at that point we knew we had a boy and a girl okay and two out of those seven and then we had two unknowns that like they just didn't get enough they basically pull some DNA once they get to blastocyst stage and have about like 75, 80 cells, Mm -hmm. they can remove some, freeze them and send that off for testing. Basically by testing, it tells you chromosomally if they're normal or abnormal. Okay. Basically if, if their chances are working or Mm -hmm. good, you know, with counting chromosomes, they obviously know the gender. Mm -hmm. So you get this report back and we had a boy and a girl and I'm like, well, which one is better or graded better? Mm -hmm. They're like, there's no difference in them. Oh, you wow. can go either way. I was just like, y'all choose. Yeah, then y'all y'all just choose. Wow. Well, yeah. Well, it was exciting. So I found out the day I went in because I couldn't wait anymore. <laughs> I was like, I need something to like, you know, you go through all of this. I mean, six weeks of all these shots and everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was in Mexico playing Crash My Ply, sneaking into oh. a bathroom before oh, yes. a show. Oh, yeah. Just like do a shot in my stomach. And was no one prepared me for like yeah. when you, because it is so specific on timing. Mm-hmm. If you're like running low on meds, like oh. they call you and they're like, "Okay, you need more blah blah blah." And I'm like, yeah. at the time, I was working a, a corporate job in between music contracts, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Yeah, but I'm at work." Like, yeah, no one like 
explained that how the, it was going to logistically work. And I was going to have to like just drop everything yep. and get to a pharmacist mm -hmm. and a very specific pharmacist yeah. to, to the compounding pharmacy to get what I needed. I know. And it's, it's very stressful. Your whole life revolves around it. That's right. So pretty much my whole 2021 revolved around IVF. Short little break. Did the farm tour with Luke. Mm -hmm. um, and I did take a break during that time. I was not um, doing a retrieval. As soon as I got back, luckily it worked out to do my number four retrieval and five back to back. Okay. That's, those are the ones I really saw the best results in. Wow. Um, and also too, it gave the doctor a chance to really dial in what the meds that worked for me. Okay. Or like most of the time, your first time doing IVF, it's just a crapshoot. Yeah. They just recommend what, works for the majority of people mm -hmm. because they don't know how your body's going to react to right. it. So doing that many cycles, it's, it's, I mean, it was awful, but at the same time, it allowed the doctor to really figure out what worked for, for me. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, well, I'm so excited yeah. for you. And Thank you. Curious. What are you, what are you most looking forward to about being uh well, again, to me, you're already our mom, but once baby's here earthside, yeah. what are you most looking forward to? And what are you most nervous about? Oh, I mean, I'm most nervous about knowing what to do. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like I've spent so much time, you know, trying to get pregnant in the fertility world and learning about what affects egg quality <laughs> that I like, I just, I know nothing about actually keeping a baby alive. <laughs> and so that's the biggest, I think makes me nervous and then at the same time i weirdly have a peace of mind where like i know i'm just gonna figure it out yeah and you, you will. know it's, i know it's the best on the job training ever yeah yeah and absolutely. you just get swept into every phase I yeah mean, it's like the next thing you know you're like oh i know exactly what i need for my diaper bag and yeah you have no clue when you first start yeah i think the most thing that i'm, I'm obviously scared of knowing what to do and then also you know figuring out how to balance everything mm -hmm. i think that's definitely a concern especially for somebody that, yeah, like you do more than one thing. Mm -hmm. And so it's making all that work together and, you know, finding time for it all, Yeah, you yeah. know, because I know it's like, I'm going to have this baby that's going to be the most important and everything else is going to have to take a little bit of a backseat, mm -hmm. which I'm nervous about. Yeah. You'll, for a little while anyway. Yeah. You can't do it all, all the time or yeah. all at once. Yeah. But you'll, you'll get, uh, you'll get a rhythm and you'll, yeah. it, it's the best lesson in time management and in mm -hmm. prioritizing because yeah. all of a sudden some things that were really important are like not even not yeah. even a yeah. thought <laughs> totally and luckily i do have a lot of great women in my life that can like really when i start freaking out about stuff can really like okay mm -hmm. here's how it goes down you're gonna be fine it's like okay all right, all right. Yep. I mean, we've done it for thousands of years. That's right. We'll, we'll figure it out. That's right. That's yeah. right. You will. You I will. like to think about the pep talk in, did you see that show in Banting Anna? Oh, not yet. Okay. No. Well, I mean, it's, it's good, but, um, the funny thing is, is the inventing the Anna attorney was pregnant and she comes in and she's talking to her and she's like, you know, why are you so fat? And she's like, well, I'm pregnant. And she's like, what you think you're special you know you're not special people squat in fields <laughs> like basically like you're not special yeah. and i was just like i don't know why it cracks me up it's like then her husband while she was having the baby their her, his pet talk to her was like you're not special <laughs> people squat in fields <laughs> i was just like oh my god that actually would probably be the kind of pep talk i would like <laughs> i mean it does put it into perspective yeah it's like people have done this yeah. Many, many women have done this before me. Because yeah, will... you feel like you're like you're carrying a Fabergé egg inside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you don't want to do anything to oh, break absolutely. it or harm it. Well, especially after having going through all the fertility well, stuff. Sure. It's like you're so nervous about everything, especially yeah. early on. That first trimester, it's like you don't even want to get excited about anything mm -hmm. because you're so scared. It's like you know, that it's, it's not real. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem real yet, you mm -hmm. know, and you finally get to a place. I think second trimester is where I really settled into. It's like, okay, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm still running. Like I can still do all the things. Mm -hmm. I'm still running actually. Wow. Good and, and I just, it's like, okay, he's safe in there. It's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just figuring all that out. Yeah. 
Yeah. But uh, I can see why people on their second one, it's a lot, it's a lot easier because you've gone through it. But yes. when it's your first. Oh yeah. Everything's new. Everything's new. Yeah. And yeah. you do feel special. Like it, you, it, and you should, and you are special yeah, because we know, but it does, but it, it does. It feels like <laughs> something like, very unique is happening to you. Absolutely. Because it is happening to you for the first time. And it's also true that, yeah. I mean, millions I know. of humans yes. have done this. Yeah. And, and <laughs> as an artist, I see other women, you know, Oh, right, yeah. Lynn, and other women that are making this work and are being very successful as like, okay, mm -hmm. all right, like it's doable. That's right. You know? Yeah. Um, so yes, I I don't mean that I'm not special. I am special, but yeah, I just like this like, okay, when you put it in perspective, there's a lot of people that have done it mm -hmm. that have been really successful at managing it all and it's it is doable. Yeah. Yeah. Challenging but doable. That's right. That's right. So, um, last question, question I ask all of my guests, mm -hmm. if it were all gone tomorrow, the, um, your music, songwriting, your singles and albums, the television shows, mm -hmm. what would you want people to know? What would you want to leave behind? Oh, that's hard. I'm just, um, just a tiny question about legacy, really. You know, I don't know. I've always stood behind the, like, Persistence has been my biggest um, just thing in life in general. Like mm -hmm. nothing's been easy, but I'm persistent. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think that would help a lot of people to know. It's like, okay, if, if I just, if I keep going, if I don't quit, if I don't give up, I will, you know, eventually get, you might not get what you want exactly, but you will, you will get you know, where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that, um, I don't know. I think that's the biggest thing I could leave. Yeah. yeah. Just be persistent. I think that's great. That's great advice. Resilience. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Well, you are both. And a beautiful mom. Thanks. And by the time this airs, you might already have um, your baby Earth side. I like my baby but, mom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, thank you so much for being my guest. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Happiest Hour. Um, you can catch Whitney at the Whitney Duncan on Instagram. Instagram. Mm -hmm. You can hear her music on Spotify and all the places. You can catch it all in show notes as well. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Oh, that was so much fun. I wish I could talk to my guests for hours. If you want more from the happiest hour too, make sure you head over to laurenlucas.com slash happiest hour for the show notes, recipes, and products mentioned in the episodes. And you can learn how to access Happiest Hour bonus content. Oh, and if you're looking for a way to make true and authentic connections with other people who are music lovers, who want to carry on the conversations that are started on the Happiest Hour episodes, and who are friendly and supportive, join my exclusive online community. It's absolutely free, and we would love to have you. I run fan contests there from time to time. I do free live stream concerts. The link is waiting for you at laurenlucas.com slash happiest hour. Until next time.